The City of Melbourne celebrates decades of service, passion and resilience through the annual Lord Mayor's Commendations. One of the recipients of these commendations is a man who is a third generation wig shop owner. And he is joining us now, Joel Grossman. Joel, welcome and congratulations. Thank you very much for having me on. So you've been doing, you're the third generation to be doing this. How many people come in and buy wigs? Well, yes, I am the third generation. Um, you'd be quite surprised, actually. Uh, there's, there's quite a large number of people that require wigs. Um, and uh, it is a bit of sort of like a, a side thing. Not many people think about it as a whole, but um, we have a very broad and diverse client base. Um, you know, you, you'd be surprised. We would do a lot with sort of the medical industry, um, the theatrical industry, uh, film and television. Um, it, it's very diverse, so uh, it, it's really amazing. How long have you been open if you're third generation? It must have been quite a while. So, yeah, um, our business was started by my grandfather, Mr. Lowry, in 1957. So this is actually our 60th year oh, of wow. being in operation. Yeah. That, that, that is a while. And do you all work in the shop together? Believe it or not, we do, yes. We, we certainly do. It's, uh, it, it has its challenges sometimes, but uh, it's also... Uh, it is a lot of fun to say that you work with your mother and your grandfather <laughs> on a, any given day. And has the shop always been in the same place or have you moved? So um, we originally we were on the corner of Burke and Swanston. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, well, it actually started before that because uh, my grandfather had a pharmacy in um, at the corner of Burke and Swanston and he opened up the week store at the same time um, with the pharmacy as well. So... Um, we started at Birkin Swanson and then uh, we moved probably about 30 odd years ago to uh, where we are now, which is just a bit further up the road on Swanson Street. And is it hard being a small business owner in Melbourne? It seems like every time I turn around, another big box store has opened. Yeah, look, I mean, that, that's, that's the situation at the moment. Um, small business, whilst it is a really amazing thing to, to be a part of and, uh, you know, with the commendations, it is um, recognised. But... Um, you, you always kind of look out at the, the bigger companies that are coming over and, and starting up, but um, because our product and, and our brand is so, you know, specific, um, people really know that you have to try the, the wigs on and you have to really, it's a personalised experience. Of mm. course, you can go online and, and buy something online like you can with anything, but um, in, in our situation, it is really a personalised thing. So. There are, of course, challenges, but um, we have to stick to our, our strengths, and, and that's pretty much what we do. So I'm really interested about the kind of people that, that come in to buy wigs. You mentioned some people in the, the medical uh, world. Tell us more yep. about your, your clientele. So um, we are very uh, strongly affiliated with um, a lot of uh, cancer organisations, um, for example, there's an organisation called the Look Good Feel Better program, yep. and uh, one of our girls actually goes to demonstrate. It's it's a brand neutral thing, so we don't go to, to sell. It's more to just um, to sit show. with cancer patients, mm. show them how to put on wigs and how to sort of prepare them for that sort of um, chapter of, of their treatment. Mm -hmm. And it can be really overwhelming and, and quite challenging for them, so we're trying to kind of ease them into it. And um, Who else? Who else other than, than who else? women? So, or, yeah. Um, yeah, we do a lot of sort of uh, theatrical stage shows, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the, the television industry. Um, do you get you know. a lot of Orthodox Jewish women who want to cover their hair come in for weeks? Uh, yeah, we do. We do have a few. Um, it, it, it's not a huge um, avenue for us, but, mm -hmm. but we certainly do have uh, a number of, of clients, yes, for the Orthodox community. And do you only do weeks for women or what about men? No, no, we do wigs for men, women, children. Um, mm. a, another range of our clients are the uh, transgender community, which we are also very um, happy to work with and, yep. and very open because, again, as I mentioned, it is a very overwhelming experience right. to, to try a wig on. Yeah. And um, our place is very open and mm. accepting and um, that's, you know, we're always happy to help anyone yeah. who needs a wig for whatever reason. Is, is a good wig expensive? Uh, it, believe it or not, in this day and age, um, not really. So uh, synthetic has come a long way in um, its technology, and there is a real misconception with uh, synthetic. You know, a lot of people think synthetic, you'll be able to pick it from a mile away, it'll be like a party wig or something like that. Yeah. 
a good synthetic wig should not be able to be picked up. So um, okay, but let me let me interrupt you. Can sure. I might not be able to pick a wig, but can you pick a wig across Swanston Street? That's a very good question. I personally can. How? Um, tell us. Tell us how you can tell. Oh, uh, look, it's very hard. I, I would have to say, having been in the industry for 10 years and seeing a fair share of, of people wearing wigs and walking in and out of our place, I can usually pick it. But mm. there are some that have fooled me in the past. Oh, well, if they'll fool you, then I think they'll fool anyone. Congratulations, right. Gro- Joel Grossman, on winning uh, one of the, the Mayor's, uh, well, being a recipient of one of the Mayor's Awards. It's a big achievement for you and your grandpa and mum. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Yep, I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us.